Mama, you know I love you. Mama, Mama, you're the queen of my heart. I love my mama, man. Oh, Charles Woodson with a legendary Hall of Fame speech while Tom Flores, the former Raiders quarterback turned Super Bowl champion two times, had to feel the collective sigh of relief of Raider Nation after the first minority head coach in the NFL finally crosses over. Congratulations. Now the current Las Vegas Raiders had their very first practice inside of Allegiant Stadium with Raider Nation, the Raider Reds, in attendance. Talk about a historic day for the Silver and Black. Coach Gruden shares his thoughts on what today meant to the nation. Obviously last year didn't see any fans at our home games. Uh, but Raider Nation, uh, the Raider fans are special. And uh, to have them in Allegiant Stadium for the first time was, was very, very, very good. To share it with Raider fans again for the first time in a long time was, was special. And I just can only imagine what it's going to be like when Seattle comes in to start the season. It'll be uh, uh, very loud, I would expect. Meanwhile, a few miles away, the NBA held day numero uno of Summer League over on UNLV's campus. Year 16 for the NBA here, and folks, it's another banger. All 32 teams taking part now. We all know that Vegas is the basketball mecca every summer. And if you're under six foot four, you're a short man. Yeah, thanks a lot, because I'm under six foot four. But anyway, the highlights of the day for me, watching those games over there in front of that packed crowd, Leangelo Ball, the other ball brother, the one that's not in the league, well, he has a wet ball. That guy can shoot that thing. Five of eight from three-point land. He's playing for the Charlotte Hornets over there. And uh, 16 points for Leangelo. But the play of the day had to be Kai Jones with the best dunk, non-dunk. All right, look at this. Looks like Stacey Augman or Derek Jones playing inside of the house. Look at this. Ooh-wee. Just keep looking. Anyway, Charlotte, though, wouldn't lose the game to Portland as Blakeney, the guard for the Trailblazers, was unstoppable. He had 27 points. After two straight losses, some sweet revenge for our Las Vegas aviators out at that beautiful Las Vegas ballpark. LVA and the Bees, and this thing was over after two innings as the Aviators put up a touchdown. It was seven to one after two. LVA scored five in the first, two in the second. None via the long ball. Well done. The LVA small ball and the Bees into submission with the dub, snapping that two game slide. And finally, MVP Asia Wilson, Chelsea Gray, and the rest of Team USA's gold medal winning women's basketball team. They're lit, they're turning up. Getting crunk, that's what old guys like me say. Uh, how about this, they're in Tokyo celebrating like Prince did in 1999. Asia had it on her Twitter or the TikTok as these young kids like Brandon in here say. Congratulations again, going seven straight gold medals for Team USA in women's basketball. Asia getting gold medal numero uno. Well, that would do it for sports. And as always, as we try desperately to come out of these very tough times, I say stay safe. Stay healthy and viva Las Vegas. Rain for the first day of the 2021-2022 school year in Clark County. Yes, and you will hear the honk of school buses as well. Many challenges, though, still remain after more than a year and a half of online learning during COVID-19. As part of our Back to School Series News 3's Tiffany Lane shares how teachers are dealing with burnout, how the pandemic has anticipated it, and how some are using their feet to make their decisions as to what they'll do now. Some Clark County School District teachers say some challenges they already felt as educators in the district were exacerbated during the pandemic, even leading some to leave. And I think some educators have reached the breaking point. Elementary school teacher Vicki Crydell is not only an advocate for herself, but also for other educators in CCSD. Educators are facing an insurmountable job on a daily basis. Cridell, the union president of the National Education Association of Southern Nevada, says there are several issues that are placing a heavy burden on teachers, including salary. When I first moved to Las Vegas in 2013, the cost of living was pretty good. It was lower. We had no state income tax. Housing was affordable, especially compared to California, where I came from. And that's just not the case anymore. A report earlier this year by the Business Insider ranks Nevada 27th in teacher pay putting the average salary in 2019-2020 at $56,672, 
saying that is a decrease of about 5.3 percent compared to the 1999-2000 school year. The reasons why people used to move to Las Vegas to take a teaching job are not so appealing anymore. Cridell says recent challenges with the Teachers Health Trust, the district health plan, are also creating problems. We learned about a new list of providers we had to use six hours before it was rolled out. We didn't even know they were going to do that. Some of us are don't have doctors now. We're trying to find new doctors. Elizabeth Campbell retired from the district in May after 25 years. She says some of the issues she saw when she started persist, including large class sizes. I taught 235 kids last year. What portion of time in a 40-hour work week do I have for 235 kids who have needs, who need to be seen, who need to feel a connection, who need their work rated? She believes the handling of COVID was the final straw. Are teachers really the best person in districts to be checking on student mental health? So we, there are a lot of things that we do. Is that the level that we want that kind of checking to happen? The district tells me as of July 14, 2021, it had 591 classroom vacancies. At the same point in 2020, they report 675. While there are fewer vacancies this year, Cridell is worried about staffing if a teacher tests positive for COVID. Because the law requires that we have a licensed teacher in every classroom. Now, subs do get a substitute license in Nevada, too. So they're acceptable to put in a classroom. And if we don't have licensed substitutes and we don't have a, a regular certificated teacher to put in the classroom, then that classroom can't exist. CCSD is actively recruiting. Our goal is always to have an effective teacher in every classroom on day one of opening. And we're making that strong push. We're reaching out to candidates here locally across the country. In discussion with the state, um, had a conversation, great discussion with the state superintendent. Uh, things that we are, have been monitoring, things that we're trying to fill our vacancy rate. Campbell says it's too late for her. She is starting a teaching job in another public school district out of state where she hopes things will be different. They fund um, education more at the national average and also have paid more attention to, uh, to class size. So voting with my feet, I'm about to find out if those two things make a big difference. Dozens of people in the Las Vegas Valley got their cars hand got their cars hand washed today. That is to help the families of two fallen officers in our community. Thank you so much for spending some time with us on the CW News at 10. I'm Crystal Allen. The Andrew Police Officers Fund hosted a car wash to keep the families on their feet of those who lost their husbands and fathers. It's our big story tonight. Our Alexis Gorey shows us how the community once again exceeds expectations. <laughs> It's amazing. I mean, my son and his best friend are over there washing cars. They're having a ball. Scrubbing for dollars. A car wash fundraiser for two officers taken too soon. It's a lot to deal with. Krista Swanger lost her husband, Officer Jason Swanger of Metro Police, to COVID-19 complications a couple weeks ago. But we're we're making it through and family, of course, they're always there. So we're we're doing the best we can right now seeing community volunteers working hard to fundraise from the Injured Police Fund, Basket of Hope Foundation, Riders for Life, and her own son is the glue keeping the family together. It's a lot to take in and to think that this is for my husband and Trooper May. And it's just, it's, it's, it just warms my heart to see how much people have come out and donated their own time for it. Funds donated from the car wash also go to the family of NHP trooper Micah May. May was killed in the line of duty after attempting to stop a carjacking suspect. He survived by his wife and two kids. There's so many expenses that come with just when somebody passes and, you know, having kids and having to raise the kids. So I know that this will go to our family as well as Trooper May's family and it'll be extremely beneficial to, to just help us in living life and taking care of our kids and our family. So if we can raise $2,000, $3,000 would be great. At last check, donations were on track to do just that. Volunteers Christina Diaz and Sean Funches from Basket of Hope says they've seen a steady stream of cars coming in, not only for a wash, but just to donate. The biggest donation has been $100, $100 bills, a few. A community coming together for families when they need it most. Whatever they've done to help, it's, it's very much appreciated. 
Alexis Gorey, News 3. So good to hear the effort continues to save lives and Trooper May's name. NHP is partnering with Vitalant for Memorial Blood Drive Wednesday. The drive is taking place at NHP's West Sunset office. It runs from 10 until 5. Donors need to make an appointment and can do so at donors.vitalant.org and enter the blood drive code NHP. Now type O positive and type O negative blood types are desperately needing needed. These are the universal blood types that anyone can receive. Hi everybody, I'm Reed Cowan from News 3 Las Vegas. We want to thank you for checking out our YouTube channel. Remember, you can always see more of our videos by clicking on the video links. And also don't forget to click that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of our YouTube updates. Thanks for watching.